Lincoln running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello to everyone celebrating Volta Day with the Cosmosphere Museum in Hutchinson, Kansas. I'm NASA astronaut Kayla Barron, and I was so excited to hear about the awesome activities you have planned today, including making your own batteries. Have you ever wondered how we generate and store electricity aboard the International Space Station in orbit 220 miles above the Earth? You might have guessed that when we're so far from home, the sun is our best source of energy. Altogether, we have four pairs of solar arrays, comprised of thousands of solar cells made from purified chunks of silicon. The arrays cover an area of 2,500 square meters, more than half the area of a football field. They can generate enough energy to power more than 40 homes. Gimbals are used to rotate the arrays so that they face the sun to provide maximum power to the space station. The solar arrays produce more power than the space station needs at one time for station systems and experiments. When the station is in sunlight, about 60% of the electricity that the solar rays generate is used to charge the station's batteries. At times, some or all of the solar rays are in the shadow of the Earth or the shadow of part of the station. This means that those arrays are not collecting sunlight. The batteries power the station when it is not in the sun. Our Heritage solar rays were installed over several space shuttle missions in the early 2000s, and we're currently in the process of upgrading and augmenting them with a new technology called Rollout Solar Arrays, which are being installed and deployed over several spacewalks. These arrays are rolled out in front of the Legacy Arrays and can produce 28 kilowatts of power. Once all six new arrays are installed, the station's power generation will increase by more than 30%. These arrays are a compact design, more affordable, and offer autonomous capabilities that can enhance a wide spectrum of scientific and commercial missions, from low Earth orbit all the way to interplanetary travel. Similar arrays are also powering deep space exploration and scientific missions, such as the double asteroid redirection test and the Lunar Gateway's power and propulsion element. Thanks to the Cosmosphere for hosting Volta Day and including me in this fantastic activity. If you enjoyed making the battery today, just remember that a future NASA mission might need a battery that you helped create. Hello, I'm Allie, an educator here with the Cosmosphere, and today we are joined by the European Space Agency astronaut, Luca Parmitano, and we are going to discuss the battery and how batteries are used today in space. Hello, Luca. Glad you could join us today. First of all, can you tell us a little bit about your astronaut career so far? Hello, my name is Luca Parmitano. I am a European astronaut of Italian nationality for the European Space Agency. I flew in 2013 uh, for Expedition 36-37 with the mission Volare, and then I flew again in 2019 for 201 days with Expedition 60-61 with the mission Viot. I was the commander of Expedition 61, and since I came back to Earth, I've been the chief of the astronaut operations for the European Space Agency. Very cool. The batteries we use in space today are a little bit more complex than the first battery. So can you tell us what the first battery was made out of? I sure can. Uh, if I remember, um, if I remember my my physics from when I was a kid, you require um, uh, copper uh, or and zinc, which is a metal of sort. Then you need a medium uh, to uh, to make sure that you uh, that you can that you let uh, the atoms the, the electrons travel and. Uh, and then you need a way to connect all those things. So how does the ISS get power when the solar panels have no sun? So we do not use uh, zinc, uh, uh, zinc batteries. Uh, we use lithium ion batteries that are huge accumulators, very powerful accumulators uh, with the technologies that was invented only a few years ago uh, by uh, two Nobel Prize physicists. What we do is that during the insulation phase, which is when the ISS is actually exposed to the sun, we have a very, very powerful solar arrays that collect the, uh, the energy from the, from the sun. And then we recharge our lithium ion accumulators. And then when we are in the 
non-insulation phase, that is when we are in the shadow of the Earth for about 45 minutes of our orbit, then we discharge those batteries which power everything on the space station. Why did the nickel-hydrogen batteries get replaced? The nickel-hydrogen batteries worked extremely well for about 15 years. Uh, however, batteries uh, have a cycle that's called uh, hysteresis, where um, even, even the most perfected batteries, you charge it up and then, and then you, you uh, discharge it. But then the next time that you charge it up, you cannot quite get exactly to 100%. And that become that become the new 100% for the battery, from the battery point of view. And then you discharge it, but when you charge it again, the battery will not quite get to that new 100%, which is going to be now a 98% or so of the original capabilities. And that hysteresis, the incapability to fully charge a battery and fully discharge it completely, uh, eventually uh, creates a degradation of the capabilities of the power to the point that you need to change. It. Now, when it was time for us to change the batteries of the space station, the International Space Station, we had a new technology come up. And actually, the new batteries are so much more powerful that we only had to install half of the size half the amount of batteries to create the same capabilities. So what are the current ISS batteries made out of? Uh, like I said, uh, the principle that char that, that uh, creates the charge is lithium ion. So lithium is the main component. Very cool. Um, what was your job when the new batteries arrived at the space station? So as a matter of fact, um, on, at, at the time, I was the commander of Expedition 61, and my job was to make sure that those batteries got installed. Um, we had uh, a crew uh, of two, team, two, two of my crewmates uh, uh, that were in, on different times. They were uh, Drew Morgan and uh, Christina Kirk, and then also Jessica Mir. Um, they, uh, the three of them at different times as a couple, they went out uh, and my job was actually to drive the robotic arm um, either with the person on top uh, to make six changes or to rotate the robotic arm with the batteries so that they could uninstall them from the cargo vehicle that took them to the space station so that they can retrieve them and then install them and put the old batteries back on, uh, uh, on the cargo vehicle. So my job was to make sure that they could that they went out. Uh, I was called the uh, the IV, the intravehicular crew member, and then also the robotic arm operator. Oh, that sounds awesome! Do you think an even better battery will be invented in the future? Well, I I think that the fascinating thing with science and, te and technology is not what we already know. Uh, it's not the, the, the questions that we've been able to, to answer, but it's the ones that we don't even know we have. And together with questions that we don't know we have comes discoveries that we haven't thought about. So when you think about that in terms of technology, I am sure that something will come up that will give us, a, will give us an idea to uh, build a new, better battery that will be usable not only on the International Space Station, but also on the ground, especially now the batteries are being used for transportation and they're becoming more and more important for everyday life. All right, now how do you feel about the fact that the battery was invented in Italy? When I think about batteries and the fact that it came from Italy or did or, or not, uh, what, I, what, what, I really, what really makes me smile is something that Albert Einstein said. One time they asked Albert Einstein, what was the greatest invention of all time? And of course, uh, Albert Einstein had a, a very fun sense of humor and he wasn't being serious, but he said uh, that the match, you know, the lighting match. And then he added the most humble, but the most useful. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, take, uh, to take that quote from Albert Einstein. I would say, when I think about a battery, any battery, it's a simple device very simple, very humble. So, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not proud like maybe for the, for the invention of the telescope or the microscope, but such a humble, a humble device, so useful that, you know, so many years later, we still celebrate and use it. Uh, that's, uh, it, it gives me joy rather than pride. So I'm, I'm happy that, that 
uh, Alessandro Volta came up with that, with that ingenious device. Thank you so much, Luca. I had a great time talking with you. Well, these are the procedure to assemble a Cosmosphere voltaic pipe. Step one, assemble materials. Holder, cap, seven copper coins, seven zinc washers, seven felt circles, salt water, and two wires. Step two, insert bottom wire through hole and bend wire so that it lays in channel and holder can stay upright. Step three, use the pipette to soak the felt with salt water not dripping wet, but wet throughout. Step four, layer the battery cells into the holder in this order from the bottom up. Copper, felt, zinc, copper, felt, zinc. Repeat until you have seven cells. Step five, insert a wire through the plastic cap. Ensure the wire makes contact with zinc and nothing else. Place the cap into the top of the battery. You may need to hold the cap down. Step six, test your battery by placing the copper end wire, bottom, to the positive end of the LED and the zinc end, top, to the negative end of the LED. In case your battery doesn't work, the top, the top three causes for battery failures are cell layers not in correct order, too much salt water electrolyte in the felt causing a short, and the LED is not connected to the correct anode cathode. 